Greetings, folks. This is Scott with the Game Audio Institute, and this is part four of our fantastic series in how to script footsteps for game audio in our scripting audio short series that will continue on forever and ever uh, at some point. Anyway, so th at this point in time, so now we are very much into the scripting phase, and we already had just covered some other stuff, so let's just get right into the whole thing. And But we want to talk about uh, kind of what we were doing before, so a little bit. So basically what happened is we were trying to determine whether or not we were on the ground or and whether or not we were moving past a certain sort of speed essentially in this case what happens is we're looking at our third person controller and they already had a parameter here called grounded so we could check for that and we were going to also to see whether the animator had a speed control which it does and we can check to see whether our player uh, object is moving past a certain speed with this variable and so as a result when we look in our script our script is automatically being saying and checking for those characteristics to make sure that if the player is grounded and the move speed is greater than a certain amount. Now we've got things, you know, through the animator and a bunch of other stuff like that, but we are going to continue on because we need to talk about the next things. So the next things that we need to talk about is how do we deal with the surface? Because we have to know what surface where we happen to be on. And an interesting sort of rhetorical question to ask is, how do you know what surface you're on? And the answer is, you don't. You know, you have to tell the computer what's going on. So that's the idea. So if we take a look at our third person footsteps, remember we're using the animation frame method and we're not using the collider on the feet. If we use the collider on the feet, there's a possibility that we could actually have the colliders, you know, check the surface and find out what uh, what surface they are. Now, the th as I said, the thing is, is that you don't know what the surface is. You actually have to tell the computer what surface that is. And the way you do that is by using something called a tag. So let's go switch over to Unity and take a look at what's going on. So for that, what ends up happening is that you have a tag. So uh, let's go take a look and see what that's all about. Game objects, all game objects in Unity have something called a tag. If you click on them, basically, you can take a look over here in the upper left-hand corner, and you'll see that the, that the tag has this untagged element, basically, to it. You want to add a tag to, this L, to, to something that you're walking on. So in this case, that's going to be this particular surface. So if you click on this surface, I've actually kind of already beaten you to it, and I've already added a tag, um, but a tag is basically a text identifier. That's all it is. It's just merely a text identifier. That's why it's there. And it doesn't do anything else, essentially. So the idea ends up being that you're going to use that text identifier and then check to see whether your object is touching the other object that has this text identifier. You do this through colliders. Remember how colliders are solid things unless you turn them into is triggers, and then, you know, then they're more transparent. So the idea is ends up being if you have a collider touching another collider, and it can then identify what collider it happens to be touching. Similarly to the foot having its own collider or whatever like that. So in this case, we're just doing it through the actual player. Now, if we look at our player, um, our player armature, you can actually see that that object has indeed its own collider. It's right there. It looks like a capsule. So that's the capsule collider of the player controller. So that then can talk to the other colliders that it interacts with inside the surface here. So in this case, we're gonna do this one here. I'm gonna click enough times to make sure we are actually selecting it and not everything else in sight. Yep, there you go. You can kind of tell when you see the orange line being drawn right there, okay? So you can see that. So once you do that, then you can see that this has a, a, a tag of tile. Now, one thing that's important is that we have to add a collider to this object or it will not work. We may be adding another component as well, but we definitely need to at least add ourselves a collider. So we're gonna add a component that's gonna be called a mesh collider. And you're gonna be able to make it convex. Convex is relatively safe as long as the object doesn't sort of, isn't kind of bowl shaped essentially. Like if you had a wall and a floor in one mesh, in one 3D object basically, uh, and you turn turn that into a convex collider, then you basically make it so you couldn't walk through it, essentially. But uh, for floors, totally fine, totally safe. Uh, and we're also going to go and find another object that we're going to walk on, and we're going to call that the other surface that we want to walk on, which will be metal. So that's going to be here, right here, and that's going to be called 
metal. And you can see it's already been tagged as metal. Now I was able to add tags by just simply going to the add tag option. There are already some ones that are built in, but basically besides that, you can add your own. It's just a string anyway. It's just a bunch of text characters. So you can add another one with this plus symbol right here, and you can add as many as you want uh, for your own purposes, you know, as, as you need to. And in fact, this is the kind of stuff that you might very well be doing inside a game company, uh, preparing surfaces for middleware even, you know, that, you know, this isn't just exclusive to, to Unity Audio only. So anyway, so that's the idea is that this object here or this area here will be considered the tile footstep area. And then when we walk over here, this will be considered the metal footstep area. Okay, good, good. And um, so now let's start getting into that and checking how we're going to check that. And that is a little complex, but we're gonna try and get into it best as we can. All right, so let's just see how this is all gonna basically play out in terms of how these tags can then be recognized and dealt with inside the game. So for this, of course, we need the collider situation. So we're basically gonna go look for colliders. Now there's there's a very special kind of thing. We've got a, a component called a character controller that the third person controller is using. That character controller has a function already on it that is a very, very useful function that we're gonna be looking at. And that's called um, on controller collider hit, which sounds pretty obvious, honestly. What it means is whenever the controller hits another collider, okay? Basically, that's the deal. Whenever the controller hits another collider, we're going to create a hit, uh, basically. And, and the hit is kind of similar to the hits that you've seen from, or that you may, might know about from uh, things like... Um, the uh, th th things like raycasts and simply you know, again that's all covered in the uh, how to think like a game designer video so that's all useful to to take a look anyway so the deal is is that we're going to basically looking for the specific hit in question which is going to be called a controller collider hit hit basically so we're kind of controller collider hit and we're gonna call this hit. And of course we have to make sure we spell everything correctly because things don't have other things in them. Okay, so now that's basically the deal. Now, the first thing that we wanna do is we do wanna make sure that we're going to define ourselves a collider here. And this collider, we wanna get the variable from the collider here. So we're gonna call this collider current surface. I'm sort of abbreviating it slightly. So current service equals hit dot collider. So that's all we have to do. We can basically look for the collider that we're hitting and then basically assign it to a collider, essentially. So the idea is that current surface is now the collider that we're hitting, essentially. That's the deal, right? So now what happens is we can say, if our current surface is... Oh, sorry, current surface dot transform dot tag. Now, this is a little bit a little bit of a thing to talk about, so we're gonna we're gonna get a little bit into depth on this. What this means. So I'm just gonna type this out and then I will explain everything that I'm talking about. Alright, so we are dealing with a collider component. So a collider component is one of the physics components and it gives various kinds of data. And what is actually happening is just like on controller collider hit, rather than something like on trigger enter or on trigger exit, which are basically one-time events, you enter the trigger, you exit the trigger, right? You're not gonna enter and enter and enter and enter and enter and enter, you know, repeatedly. In this particular case, this on controller collider hit is almost a continuous stream of information. It's constantly returning some value every time it hits something, okay? And because we are game audio people, in most cases, we are not interested in having that information be always present all the time because it uses up a lot of data to be able to actually constantly say, hey, by the way, you're doing this, 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 this repeatedly, right? So the idea is what we are interested in in terms of our footsteps is we're not interested in us so much in exactly what object we happen to be on at exactly that moment. We're interested in what happens if the object changes, 
okay? So what we really want to keep track of is, does this object change, okay? If it changes, now let's do something. If it doesn't change, just ignore it. We don't have to say it there and say, oh, this is tile, 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 every single frame, right? We don't need to do that. We just need to be able to go, oh, hey, when we're not on tile, then let's make that new surface be the next one, which is metal, right? Oh, and then now if we're going metal and metal and metal and metal and metal and metal, we don't need that repeatedly again. We can just, we can just, again, when it changes back to tile, then we can just say, hey, by the way, it's not the same as before. Now it's tile. Okay, so this is what we're going to do is when we get to this, we're going to basically create our surface, we're going to set our surface variable to the tag that it's going to be, essentially. So in this case, we're going to say current surface dot transform dot tag and that will basically do it so essentially what happens is that we're basically setting our surface to whatever the tag value that we're colliding with is going to be and then as long as it's the same value every single time it's never going to hit this control it's only going to hit this control at the point that it changes and that it's different than what surface has already stored so in other words surface stores the current value of of the surface and then if that surface does not match the next surface that's encountered then what happens is it's going to change itself and reset itself to the new surface value essentially okay so that pretty much is going to basically do that and now we can pretty much test this out and find out if it works but we do need to probably have a little bit of information to see how it's going to work essentially so that's the idea we need to do that we so we're going to basically do that and say okay uh debug log and go like this and then say surface changed to oh, i said derface that's lovely okay so say surface changed to and then you put a plus sign in here and then you can stick variables that you want in this case we're just going to use current surface dot transform dot tag because that's all we need to know what the current value is and that way it'll tell us what surface we're walking on basically all the time so now we can test this out inside the game so now it says surface change to tile Right, right over here, right? So now let's go over here and we're going to run over to the other thing. And remember, we'll deal with all this stuff later, but we're just taking it in steps, literally, ha. <laughs> and now it says surface change to metal. And now we walk on the other side of here and it goes back to surface change to tile again. All right, so that is pretty much correct at this point. Now that is that is correctly done. Actually, we do need to maybe move this around just a teeny little bit so we can see it outside there. You can see that the surface changed to metal once and the surface changed to tile twice. If we wanted to uncollapse this, then this is in order. So it says surface changed to tile. Now what happens is that if we did this every single frame, then it would print a million different times. But we only had it happen when the, when the value doesn't match. So this is helpful. So we say surface changed to tile and then surface changed to, actually we had it here and sorry, surface changed to tile. And then over here, surface change to metal, somewhere around here, yep, right there. And then basically surface then change back to uh, tile right over here. All right, folks, that is it for this week. We are going to conclude with our fifth part coming up, uh, which will then conclude our final uh, footstep event uh, situation. And the idea is uh, we'll keep on doing this whole stuff as long as this is kind of popular and interesting to everybody here. And uh, obviously, leave a comment, uh, leave a like, share, subscribe. Uh, you know, let us know if there's any, anything interesting that you particularly want to find out more about uh, inside here. Uh, we are also got a Patreon available, so if you uh, subscribe to that, you can get our scripts for free and everything like that. So, but anyway, I hope this helps you get your game audio on, and we will see you again next week. Take care.